Perloff from Real Flute Project, and I'm here at Northern Kentucky University, the university where I teach. And today we have a guest artist who's come to do some master classes for my students, my good friend, flutist Joan Sparks. Hi, Thank Nina. you so much for coming. I'm so glad to be here. So we had so much fun playing that for you, and we were especially excited that we got it done in one take. In one take. <laughs> <laughs> one take before 9 a.m. That's always a really good right, thing. Right. I always say with recordings, you can do it over and over again and do 100 takes, but chances are, at the end of the day, you're going to go back and use the first or second that take. The very first one, right. So we, we decided to just stop and go with the first take. <laughs> exactly. But we thought we would share with you, um, first of all, a little bit about the flutes that we're playing on this recording. We decided we wanted to try to have a matched sound. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, Joan brought some matched flutes for us to play from her shop, the Flute Pro Shop. And what we're playing on today are two Muramatsu flutes, um, the DS model flute, handmade flutes. Um, these flutes are remarkably consistent, as you probably just mm -hmm. heard. And so they're sterling silver, drawn tone holes, the whole open holes, low B. These both have offset Gs and then C sharp trills. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Vanna White presentation. No, but this was beautiful. And I only warmed up on it for about five or six minutes before, that, yeah. before we did yeah. this recording. Yeah. Just just basically blew some warm air through it right. to get it going. Um, and I enjoyed that very much because it gave me a real sense of what the instrument can do without yes. really even me having a chance to get to know it. But um, the thing that was so nice is that I felt the intonation was very comfortable, mm -hmm. even though we didn't have a lot of warm-up time together, <laughs> which is always a little risky. Um, well, but Nina, I felt comfortable really matching your pitch very yeah, nicely. Yeah, that worked out really well. Um, what you guys might want to know is um, I drove up here and uh, got to this hall at 8.30 this morning, and <laughs> and we finished that, that first take of the Telemann at uh, five minutes of nine. So this was really done. Right. And most of that time was used to set up my recording equipment. Yes, right, right. And what, what I really enjoyed about this whole process was um, we walked in, we chose the duet, we played it through, and as we played it through the very first time, each of us had little phrasing ideas that we basically tossed back and forth. And then without talking about it, just listening to each other, we were able to imitate and then go and try another different idea and then Nina would copy that and we, it is so much fun to do that. It's, it's like a kind of improvisation, although you're reading all the notes and the notes have to be correct, but it's just one of those things that um, is one of the great joys of music making, I think, that kind of interchange. Absolutely, and the, the music itself so this is um, one of the six sonatas by Telemann. Um, he wrote wonderful flute duets. The music itself was not difficult technically, but what was challenging for us was the amount of listening that we were doing mm -hmm. under this kind of a circumstance. And it was really fun for me as a musician mm -hmm. to be able to just listen. Um, Joan, as playing the first flute part, starts the line. So right away I was able to hear how much vibrato is she using? Mm -hmm. What kind of tone color is she using? What are the note lengths on the articulations? Exactly. And I had four, five, six, seven notes to figure all to that figure out. it out <laughs> before I came in to play so that I could make sure that I was trying to match her as, as accurately as possible so that it would really sound as much as possible like one flute exactly playing two yeah. different lines yeah exactly and then Nina you had when we went to the upper note and then came down um, an octave uh, it's dum, marked bum, right dum, marked dum, dum, bum, 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 bum. the first time we went through I did that very legato second time I heard you go bum um, and it was so elegant, so I did that back. And then that's how we recorded it. So, but that's, that's like a true colleague to me. That's like, you know, there's mutual respect going back and forth, there's mutual admiration, there's, and that, that, that is so critical in making music. And sometimes I think flute players forget that. I think sometimes flute players want to dominate what's going on. And it's so refreshing to be with somebody that understands the musical imperative is really what we're going after. And one of the things that um, I was listening for as well was balance between yes. the two parts. Yes. Um, because this is a duet where sometimes the first flutist has the most prominent line mm -hmm. and sometimes the second flutist has the most prominent line. Mm -hmm. So I was listening and trying to figure out when do I need to let my voice come above the line and right. when do I need to pull back. Right. And that is sometimes the hardest thing for people to do is to say, you know what, I need to be underneath Joan exactly. here and let her melody carry. Exactly. And, and I could feel Joan doing the same thing mm -hmm. when I would have the main melody that she would go underneath me. So we were like 
weaving in and out of each other. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's interesting with this too is I think you and I come from very different schools. Like I'm all the way back for all my teachers. I'm very much in the American school of flute playing. And aren't you very in the French school? Yeah, I have um, a lot of training. I have a little bit of both mm -hmm. actually because mm -hmm. I studied with Alain Marion and Sophie right. Cherrier in Paris. And right. I studied with Lyon Geisy right. who studied in the French school. But then I also studied with Brad who's a Baker student. Right, right. So I have a little bit of everything mixed together. But at the end of the day, you know, we talk a lot about flute schools. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, if you're trained to listen carefully mm -hmm. and to have control over this instrument to make it do what you want it to do, it doesn't matter what school you come from. You, so can, you can create whatever sound you need for that moment, and that's right. really the goal. That I, is the I goal, think. absolutely. So thank you so much. My I pleasure. really enjoyed this, and maybe we'll turn the camera off and play some more. Let's do that. <laughs> You want to try this one? Yep. Bum, da, 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 da,